Adam, you take your joy wherever you can find it at the moment, just in the little things? Yeah, well, yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, playing at home in front of 42,000 was, was a, a good reminder of what, um, how big the club is and how good our support is. But, uh, yeah, small wins we're looking for at the moment. Obviously, uh, pretty challenging the, the first two sides we played. But, um, yeah, we're chasing some things that hopefully in the long, long run will pay us back. One of those small wins, Adam, I watched the game. I'm thinking at halftime, my God, my God, what, what are they going to do? And then after half time, for probably a quarter and a half, got away at the end a bit, but for about a quarter and a half, we, we, we saw some spirit, we saw some fight in your club and, and some young fellas and some old players. They really, they really put in a tremendous effort. Is, is that the small wins you're talking about? Yeah, I'm trying to find the balance between... Well, we want to play to win, obviously, um, but we, we haven't been competitive for, for a period of time. Uh, and with the list changeover... I think we're really clear about what we need to do um, and to be competitive is the first step. So we're chasing little things like ground balls and clearances and contested possessions and inside 50s and that, that's the first step for us to, to be competitive. Um, and then we obviously try and blood some young kids in as well while we're doing it and you know, we need to get better in so many areas. We, we start with the basics. Um, and then can we compete for a bit longer, I thought on the weekend. Our, and it's a bit like the Port game as well. There was periods there where we were quite competitive and there's there's periods where we dropped away. So, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do, but we all understand where we're at and we know, you know, the path's a long one, but we're up for it. So we're pretty clear about our direction. Adam, in the coaching challenge that you've got in this phase, what's the balance between um, the nurturing environment to grow and to advance and the demanding environment to hold accountability and then I guess what that looks like in integrity selection. And we just got a little glimpse of that with Andrew Gaff and, you know, how that relates to maybe Jack Darling. Or Where's the line there for you? Well, me personally, it's, um, it's interesting. that I, I think it's been a real challenge the last two and a half years to get a real gauge of our list and, and what we've got available through... Uh, through the injuries and even back to the COVID times, it's been a difficult to, to get the best out of our group with limited availability. So uh, I said to the, to the players last week after the Port game, it's been hard to get to sleep at night with dealing with things like that where there's things out of your control. But we're, we're a bit healthier now so and we've, we've got a bit more clarity about our direction. So our expectations are that we come in and play our best footy and we, we play to win and, and we hopefully develop along the way. Uh, and we're really clear about that now. So I'm actually a lot more positive than perhaps I was internally in the last couple of years, just because of the fact we've got a healthy list and we can get to see some of these younger guys come through with some senior players who are now fit. And albeit we're missing Oscar Allen at the moment and, and Matt Flynn will make a difference as well and Liam Ryan. But you know, largely we've got the list that um, we think is going to take us to the next step eventually. So I'm actually pretty positive, to be honest. It, I haven't, I haven't been sleeping too well the last couple of years, to be <laughs> brutally honest. But, um, yeah, at least we'll get some growth now. We'll get some real clarity about how I'm going as a coach and our coaches. Um, and hopefully we stay healthy. Just on that, Sam, I don't think there's a person in footy who didn't feel for you. You, you weren't winning games and the, and the critics were coming. You got backed into coach again. And I think it would be foolish for people to think, oh, no, he'll be fine. How was your mental state over the, over the last 12 months and... <laughs> Yeah, you know, and how how confident are you that your mental state's going to be reasonable as you have another challenging year? Oh well, let's be honest. I think if if we had the season we've had the last couple of years, and there was you know a full list available, and um, you know the accountability would have been a lot more fierce on me personally. Um, so I'm really clear that that's that's the case. That's why they've backed me in to take us through the next phase and. Um, we're all up for it. So, yeah, I, we don't have to do the job, Robbo. It's not, we're not forced to do it. So, uh, and I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. There's, there's tough times, but I've, I've had plenty of good times as well. So I'm actually looking forward to see the whole club grow into a new era and, and to be part of that for however long it'll be. It, um, I need to enjoy myself. So extension of that, do you feel that you'll be held more accountable this year than you have in the previous two years? Absolutely, yeah, and that's okay. Um, what what you're held accountable to is is something that you got to be connected to with the club. So you know, getting these small wins, getting some more development into our players, seeing improvement with our younger players, getting the best out of our older guys as well. 
and then be more competitive. I mean, that's that's really the brief that um, we will all want to take take on. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, it's a tough industry, um, but I think we know where we're at. D does it allow you to be more demanding of your established senior veterans? Yeah, well, you can see that already with you know the. The, the, the availability, there's going to be challenges now between selection, which is great. I haven't had a proper match committee for two years. So, you know, having some selection conversations about some of our players is, is a, it's part of the game. And um, having that now is, is, a, is a healthy thing. So I'm, I'm fine with that too. Do you find it difficult, Adam, when you're coaching with love and then maybe coaching with fear? Does that still exist? Is there, is there a Dennis Pagan streak in you somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> feels like there's a streak in you with Dennis. The way you, I like your coach talk. You really like elevate your voice like you're an angry dad. Um, oh, look, I, I think um, having empathy for the player and the current reality of, of the, the generation we're dealing with is, is different than when I was playing. Um, but I, the response you do get when you do drop the hammer or you're stern with the group and, um, you know, if... You, you know with the levers you need to pull, but it, the, the times have changed a little bit, Robbo, and there's a lot more scrutiny on all of our players, and sometimes they need support, and quite often a lot more than perhaps what you what you uh, you guys think, because it's uh, it's a real challenge when someone's not playing well and going harder at them about the standards um, sometimes backfires. But no doubt there's still there's still room for it. Um, you all need to be reminded sometimes. What's Harley Reid shown you so far, Adam? Well, yeah, he, he just loves he loves playing with his mates and he loves playing to win. And he keeps it nice and simple. Um, we just wanted to play his natural game. Where he plays at the moment, he seems to be suited just to be playing on ball. Um, we've put him back and put him forward at stages, but the game's so dynamic at the moment, just trying to rest a player anywhere else for his, someone his age. Um, we feel like just playing on ball is probably the best at the moment. And he's got, he's got a lot to learn. But uh, really excited about what he can do for us. His best is really good. Um, and he's fit in really well with the players. So, But he's still 18. Um, actually, I was on the bench with him yesterday. And he said, oh, I can't, I can barely breathe. I've got a really sore throat. And I said, oh, well, just take a strepsil. And he goes, what's a strepsil? <laughs> 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 he, he's, he's, um, he's just still young and raw. Um, and I'm just holding on with the language. Um, but, yeah, it's all, it's all part of it. So it's all good. So... On this side of the country, I think it's relatively sound ground to say we've never seen a media... Well, a, a media organisation engage with a player like this before. It's been weird to watch from our side of the country. What have you made of the Western yep. Australian's use of the player as he arrives as an 18-year-old? Yeah, we can't really control that. Um, it, it's... And the only person I can connect um, Harley to is probably Nick Nat and the attention. So that's, that's in the public eye as well. So dealing with that, um, we all sort of think he's pretty resilient and he's OK, but it's another level. So dealing with expectations, something he's handled, but this, it has over here. And I don't think it's malicious or anything with the West Australian in particular who um, use his image a lot. Um, I think they really want him to succeed. So, uh, you know, we're sort of dealing with it. Um, and I think they do get the fact he's only 18, but this needed uh, someone to put up in lights, and at the moment they're using him. Um, so I think he's managing it okay. We can't control it. All we can do is support Harley as best we can, um, and, and that's all we can do, really. Adam, that's a pretty odd and worrying moment. Yeah, we've just got to increase the fine, don't we? Make it 25 grand or something like that, and uh, it'll all get sorted. I feel like the guys are all chipping in 500 bucks each so their mate can jump over the fence. So, um, yeah, it hasn't seemed to have gone away over the years. Sort of get one every 10 or 15 weeks. Uh, our drum and golf scramble tonight. So Robbo posed the question around increasing the season yet further. The AFL is obviously open to a 24th game in some sort of construct. Is, Adam, where are you in the... We've gone to 23. Could we get to 24? Is that a bridge too far? Oh, I don't know. I, look, I'm, my headspace at the moment around what we're trying to do is probably taking priority to the bigger picture of the game, but the list sizes are smaller than they've ever been. Uh, the talent pool's going to get stretched again, and 
we want to increase the, the season. I'm, I'm not quite sure it's the, the best thing to do for our players at the moment. With um, the ballistic nature of the game, it's, it's a real challenge to get them up every week. And I think we've all conceded a little bit to, to prepare our players after four or five day breaks um, post-COVID. And uh, I, I think the challenge on our players to get up and available every week. Personally, it's been a real challenge for the last couple of years, full stop. But it's, it's another step in the wrong direction, I think. Adam, can I, I just wanted to ask about the coaching technique in the Peter Wright scenario. Player coming back with a fly, player going forward. What's, what are, what's the game asking you to coach Peter Wright to do? Uh, it, that's really difficult. Um, I think the awareness piece is, is, you know, some players have it, some don't. So um, a, a lot of these incidents are guys protecting themselves at the last minute and it's hard to stop that. Um, but I sort of get why and, and how and, you know, that these things are always going to be there where it's just that split second decision where you you need to take your eye off the ball because you feel contact coming and it looks like it's a delib deliberate act. So I'm not quite sure what the what the answer to this is, but um, it's, it's going to happen. Ken, Adam, great to have you with us. Thanks a lot for joining Coaches Night. Thanks, boys. Thanks, boys.